Hello, my name is Darren Thomas. I'm the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this particular video, we're going to be taking a look at the Auto Create Group feature as it is found inside Moodle. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, different uh, purposes in this particular video. So we're going to look at the Auto Create Group feature as it is found inside Moodle. I'm going to show you how you can preview groups and check you know, by the number of groups and also to preview groups using the number of members per group. And then lastly, we're going to take a look at some of the some of the options that are available with um, the auto create group feature in Moodle, specifically, you know, how to prevent small groups and also how to ignore specific uh, things as you are setting up the groups. So here I am. This is an actual class that I uh, taught um, about a year ago. Um, I needed a, a class that had some students in it, a large number of students in it. So that's what we're going to be take, using. Now I need to address particularly, you know, when will you use groups? Groups are particularly useful, in my experience, for two things. One, if you have a very large class and you want to try to find ways to limit the students interacting with each other, like in forums or something. And then the second reason is um, for assignments. You might want to limit, um, you know, uh, when students are working in assignments by groups. That's another useful feature for using um, groups. Of course, we don't want to limit it to, to those only two reasons, but if you have a large class and you want the students to interact with each other or and or if you have like group assignments, those are the two primary benefits that the typical Moodle user will have for creating groups. So as you can see, we're already logged into the class. If you want to make groups, you have to click over here um, on users and then click right here on groups. And it'll take you right here. Now we're doing the auto create, uh, auto create group feature in this class, but yes, you can make groups manually and we will discuss that in a future video. So I'm already here and we're going to click right here on auto create groups. And you can see right here at the top, you have the naming scheme. And so when you do your first auto create group feature, it all may have a group and then it has a little called the, uh, the ampersand. And so basically the ampersand stands for a letter. In fact, if you want to know what all this means, you click right here and it'll tell you. So the, the at symbol or the ampersand, what it does is that when Moodle creates a different group that you want, it'll be group and then it'll be a letter name. Group and a letter name, so A, B, C, D, etc. The ampersand or the at symbol just stands for whatever letter is next in the alphabet. The other option that you can use is you can also use the hashtag sign, which represents numbers. So if I change this to the hashtag, the first group will be called group one, and then group two, group three, group four, et cetera. That's how that works. Now, the next thing you have to be familiar with is auto create based on what? So you can tell Moodle either to make a certain number of groups, which is number of groups, or you can have Moodle to create groups versus based on how many members per group. So right now it's on number of groups. So in other words, in this class, which by the way, this class has 26 students in it. Let's say I only want to have say six groups. So I put this, the six here and now right now Moodle will make six groups and try to deal with how many students per group in a different way. That's how this works. Um, these other features are mostly self-explanatory. Select members with the role of student. So I only want students in the different groups. I'm not going to, you know, put teachers or anything inside the groups. Uh, select members from groupings. We're not going to talk about groupings in this particular video, but just to give you a slight teaser, groupings is a collection of several groups because you may not be familiar with this, but you can actually have several students in several different groups and also several different students in several different groupings, which is where it gets very, very confusing. So for now, to keep this video simple, we're going to keep this on none. And then next is the allocation member, how to allocate members. And right now it's set to random, but you can also set it to no allocation by first name, by, by ID number, et cetera. But for now, we're going to keep it on random. Prevent last small group. This is another one of the features. Uh, right now, this is not available because of how I have these options set up here. But if you don't want to have, sometimes if you've ever had to count off students in the class, you know, you want to have five groups as an example, and you end up with one, one group that has like two, and then the other groups have like four or five. By checking this, um, by checking this feature, Moodle will prevent that. But in order for me to do that, I would have to change this up here to members. So now you can see it's, it's now available for me. 
So now it'll be six members per, per group and there will not be one little small group. There'll be like one group that's extra big as an example. But we're gonna change this back to what it was. And also, um, another important feature is that if somebody is already in a group, you can tell Moodle to ignore them by checking the box. That's how this works. So before we make the, the, the actual groups, we're going to do the preview button here as I show you how Moodle can change the different groupings based on the settings. So it looks like everything is set up here as we want. Let's just go through this again. The groups are going to be by letter. So it'll start with group A, group B, group C, group D, group E, group F, etc. There are going to be six groups created all together. We're going to uh, only assign in groups people who have the role of student in this class. Um, we're not messing with groupies in this video. The allocation will be random, so there's no idea who's going to be in what group. We, we don't have to deal with the prevent last small group feature yet because we're going by number of groups, not numbers of members per group. And we're not going to ignore users who are already in groups. So it looks like everything is set up. And so if we want to preview our, our groups, we click on the preview button like this. Oh, whoops. I don't want the groupings on. Sorry about that. So let me try this again. I click on preview and there you go. These are our groups. So notice how we start with A again. That's right up here consistent with this, our, our, our at sign or the ampersand. Group B, group C, group D, and then look at how many Notice how we have six groups. Again, that's what we told Moodle. We wanted six groups. So this is how things look when you go by number of groups. Now we're going to change things a little bit. Instead of number of groups, we're going to go by members per group. So now the criteria now is, is that we want to have, we'll just say to make it simpler, we want to have five people per group. And now we have the prevent last small group feature available. So what this will do is instead of having like one group at the end, it's like two, it'll have, you know, two groups that are maybe six members in a, in a group instead of five, as an example. So we're going to highlight this. We're going to leave the ignore users in the group blank because that's not going to benefit us. And we're going to click on preview. And so you can see right here. We have the first group has six. Again, we didn't want to have one little small group of one person or, as an example. And then all the other remaining groups are five, as you can see right here. And so let's just say, for example, I'm happy with these particular groups. I click submit. And now you can see I go back to my original. This is kind of like the home page for creating groups. And now I have a group A, B, C, D. And then over here off to the right is the names of the people in the different groups, which is very, very useful. If for whatever reason I don't want these groups anymore, I can highlight whichever groups I don't want and I can click on delete selected groups. That's how that works. So there you have it. In this particular video, we looked at how to use the auto create group feature in Moodle. I showed you how to make groups based on the number of groups you want or based on the number of members you want per group. And we also looked at the, the different features that are available, such as ignoring um, people who are already in groups and also preventing like the last group from being too small, etc. So again, using the auto create group feature is very, very valuable in my experience for when you have large classes and you want to put people into forums where like they can only see the people who are in their group and or when you have like group assignments and you want them to uh, submit an assignment as a group. So I hope that this video was useful for you. Thank you for watching.